Hey guys, let's talk about the Esoteric Flare Striker. I want to give you a quick breakdown on my build and some tips about it. And if you have any doubt or comment about the information that I will give you, you can leave it on the comment section below or you can find me on Twitch actually and we, and we can discuss it even more. For this, I want to explain really fast all the skills that I use. And while I'm doing that, I will go through the Relic gear set, accessories, gems, engravings, and even the cards. For the skill that I use, it's, it's really simple. This is basically the same build for every Esoteric Flurry Striker. You want a Sky Shattering Blow with Wealth Rune, Excellent Mobility Tripod, Blessing of the Wind Tripod, and Abundant Resource Tripod. I want to do a quick note here. The Blessing Wind of the Tripod is really important for the Esoteric Flurry Striker, and, and I will elaborate a bit more on it. And Abundant Resource Tripod is also really important to have it at max level. The Blessing Wind Tripod is really good because you can almost have it 100% of the time activated. To do that, you need the level 5 tripod, a lot of sweetness, and a level 10 gem. But let's talk about it a bit later on the engraving section. The Moon Flash Kit is level 10 with Well Room also, White Flame Kit to get more esoteric meter, excellent mobility for some, for some travel distance, and Full Moon Kit for some damage. Store Dragon Awakening, you want this at level 4 or level 10 with Escalade Mobility and Enhanced Strike to get even more travel distance and a bit more of damage. I use this one with the Quick Recharge Room. You will ask me, why don't you use Rage? Actually, I don't need Rage. I already cap it on the attack speed and movement speed, so Rage is not useful for me. I prefer this cooldown reduction proc for the Sky Shattering Blow. The next skill will be Lightning Whisper, level 10. The tripods that you want here will be Lightning Blessing. This is a synergy skill, actually. They will give 8% more attack speed for your party members, quick preparation for cooldown reduction, and Fatal Lightning to, to do even more critic resistance reduction on the buff, a total of 18%, actually. For the esoteric skill, you want to use Tiger Emerge, Call of the Wind, Blast Formation, and Lightning, Lightning Tiger Strike. The Tiger Emerge, I will use it with Overwhelm Room because this is one of the skills that have highest stagger on the Striker. Quick Preparation Tripod, Single Hit, Ascension. The Esoteric Call of the Wing of the God is also another skill with highest stagger for the Striker. So Overwhelm Room here, Lightning Storm Tripod, Grow Attack, and Summon Storm. With no here, the Call of the Wing God could be replaced with Sweeping Kit, but I actually like to use Call of the Wind for two reasons. First, Sweeping Kit is a back attack and also have a high cooldown and also generates esoteric or meter. Actually, you will waste a lot of the esoteric meter if you, if you use Sweeping Kit. But for Call of the Wind, have highest stagger. Once you get the Summon Store Tripod, it will not be back attack anymore, so you can actually use it on the front and on the side of the boss and also have a low cooldown. So this is basically why I use Call of the Wind. Blast Formation, Gale Wind Room, level 12, with Point Detection Tripod, Flame Explosion Tripod, a Great Explosion Tripod, and Lightning Tiger Strike is the hard-hitting skill of the Esoteric Flurry Striker, with also Gale Wind, Single Hit, Weak Point Detection, a Charge Kick Tripod. For the Awakening skill, actually, it's your choice. You can use whatever you want. Both of them do the same amount of damage. So this is the this is it for the skill. Let's go with the relic gear set and stat. The relic gear set, the best for the striker is actually the entropy set. Some striker like to use the hallucination, but if you want to get the most damage possible, the entropy set is the best. And even for me, the build that I use with the engraving, actually this helped me a lot to get that critical damage extra. And for the stats, you want a 50% swiftness, 25% spec, and 25% crit. Why 25% spec? Because you need you need this amount of spec to get even more esoteric meter to do all your rotation without issues. The crit is necessary at least 500 of crit to have enough critical chance to make sure that almost all your attacks will hit as critical skills. For the engravings, well, this is where it gets interesting. Actually, for the engravings, you have a lot of variation for it. Let me explain you why I use this one and all the variations that you could use. First of all, the mandatory engraving for DPS is Grudge, Ambush Master because I am back attack class, Esoteric Flurry at level 3, and 
let's just start with the variation. I use precise dagger instead of adrenaline. That should be your first question. Why I don't use adrenaline? There are two reasons that I don't use adrenaline. First of all, I hate adrenaline because I don't want to be worrying about having all the stack. And also, sometimes in some mechanics, it happens really frequently. The boss like to run around doing mechanics or like to disappear to do another mechanic. And I usually lose all my stack of the adrenaline. So for me, it's a waste of time using a skill to get all the stuff before I can do all my damage. Let me give you a quick demonstration what I meant with this. Let me summon a boss here. A good friend Lumerus is here to let me show you. Let's let's make an example. Let's see. I'm, I'm doing bikers, maybe gate two or gate three. I do a moon flash kit and suddenly bikers disappear to do a mechanic. And while she's doing that, all my stack of adrenaline disappear. So when she comes back, I have to do a Storm Dragon Awakening, a High Shattery Blow and all the stuff to get all my stack before I can start using my esoteric skill to do damage. What happens with Precise Dagger? Well, I don't have to worry about that. I already have my critical chance 20% up. And I know I have, a, I have a reduction of critical damage of 12%, but I don't worry about that much because Entropy Set, like I said, helps me to offset that. So... If I'm using precise dagger, if I have maybe, I don't know, let me do this. Maybe I have just one more chap up. When she comes down, I just have to do lightning whisper to get my critical chance up. And I can use after that all my esoteric skill without worrying about having all the stacks. So that is the first variation that I use is precise dagger for my friends that are precise dagger enjoyers, don't worry. This is actually a good engraving for the esoteric flurry striker. The next one will be why am I using Curse Doll instead of Kimblon Weapon? Actually, you could see maybe 80% of the striker using Kimblon Weapon. Well, there is a reason for that. It was cheaper for me to build it with Curse Doll. And actually, I prefer to have this 25% healing reduction instead of a chant of doing less damage. Why is that? Let's see the engravings here. The Kimblon weapon gives me critical damage, 50% actually at level 3, but I have actually a chance to deal 20% less damage. This Shang is actually like a 10%, so right now, with the build that I have, I don't want to risk losing some damage in during my rotation. So Kimblon weapon is the variation. You can actually choose Curse Doll or Kimblon weapon. If you want to use Kimblon Weapon, you need to make sure that you have enough critical chance to use it so it can be as effective in damage as Curse Doll. For that, there is a table. Let me show you that table. Or actually, there are several tables for it. You can see here. You can Google right away Kimblon Weapon Efficiency Table. So the first thing that you have to know about this table is that this is taking into account that you already have Kimblon Weapon. So we have to start at 200%. For me, I have the entropy set that gives me extra critical damage. So I will be here at 255%. So for me to be effective with Kimblon weapon and also using entropy set, I will need to have of secure at least 19% critical chance. Oh, let's do it less. 85% critical chance to have or to be as close to curse doll damage as possible. But now that I'm using Precise Dagger, you need to remember that I have a reduction of 12%. So basically, you can find me here at 245% in this line. So for me to be effective with Kimblon Weapon, I will just need only be over 80% critical chance. And actually, that is pretty easy using Precise Dagger, being an Entropy class set, and also being a back attack class. Let me show you how. Or let me give you the quick math. For me, it's pretty simple. 20% 20, 20 of Precise Dagger. Let's make it 20% on the Entropy set because we have Kakul Seidun that can give you a level 2 bonus on the set. So that will be 20% critical extra chance. And also we have almost 20% on the critical rate here with the stats. So basically for me, I have 63% because we have to take into account the car set and I will talk about the car set later. So for me, it's 63%. We can add 10% more because we do back attacks. So we will be 73% and we can even add 18% more because we will use Lightning Whisper before we use all our damaging skill. So Lightning Whisper, Lightning Whisper give you 
18% more critical sound. So in total, you will have 91% critical sound. So for the Esoteric Fluidity Striker, it's actually pretty viable to use King Blonde Weapon without losing efficiency. The next two variations need a pretty specific condition to be able to use it, and that will be a Ray Captain and Mass Increase. I know, because a lot of people will, will ask me sometimes why I don't use Ray Captain and Mass Increase. For the Ray Captain, I will have to go back to this skill, the Sky Shattering Blow, and this is the reason why Blessing of the Wing is so important to have at max level, is that for Ray Captain to be effective, you need to cap your moving speed at 140% all the time. And for you to be able to do that with the Esoteric Flurry Stacker, you need to have this buff 100% of the time up. And for able for be able to do that, as I said, you will have level 5 triple. You will need also over a thousand swiftness. And also you will need a level 10 cooldown gem for the Sky Shattering Blow skill. So that is the way that you could use Ray Captain on your build. And the same reason apply for Mass Increase. You will have here a reduction on attack speed of minus 10%. So you will need to cap your attack speed. So you can't notice that reduction. So these are actually variation on the engravings that you could use. So I will leave it to you. So you can choose all the five engravings that you want to use, having into account all the, the conditions that I just said. For the gems, this is pretty easy for me. I just want high level damaging gems or damage gem for my esoteric skill. And basically the only skill that usually do not align with my rotation is the blast formation. That is why it's the highest cooldown skill that I have. I will work even on a level nine gem for the blast formation and of course, for the Sky Shattering Blow, is already here. For the Sky Shattering Blow to be at least a level 9 also. For the card set, well, well, this is actually the card set that I use because I don't have the Mera card set for the Striker. Or you could use also the Life of Salvation or the best card set for the Striker on Korea right now. It's actually this one. Let me build it here. It will be this card set of the three Umar families that give you a bonus on the back attack damage once you get it to full awakening. And also the Fate of the Lassenist that give you extra elemental damage. So once I get this, I will do the trade. The Lost Wing Cliff, I will lose that critical rate. But like I said before, I am not worried about it. I already over the 80% critical chance that I need to use Kimblon weapon and all my uh, my other engravings. And I will get, like I said, this card set over here. So this is it for the card set. Let me give you a quick demonstration on the rotation. It's actually pretty simple. The only thing that you need to worry here while using precise dagger or even the adrenaline, you know, the adrenaline you have to, to get all the stack before doing all the damage. But with Precise Dagger, I just want to use all my generating skills and all my buffing skills that I will get synergy with it. And after that, use all the esoteric. So I can start with a Moon Flash Kit, a Sky Shattering Blow for the buff, Lightning Whisper also for the buff, and the Critical Chance debuff on the boss. And, all, and after that, I can use all my esoteric skills. To use my last esoteric skill that will be Call of the Wing God, I just need to use Thor Dragon Awakening, and again, Sky Shattering Blow, and I can use Call of the Wind. So the rotation actually goes like this. Moon Flash Kick, Sky Shattering Blow, Lightning Whisper, Tiger Strike, Tiger Emerge, Blast Formation, Storm Dragon Awakening, Sky Shattering Blow, and Call of the Wing again. After that, I will have Moon Flash Kick again, Sky Shattering Blow again, Lightning Whisper again, and Rance and Repeat. So, this is basically all the information that I want to give you. I'm sorry it was a long video, but I have to give you all the information so you can be aware of all the conditions that you need to meet 
to so you can build properly your esoteric flurry striker and i can see you on the next video bye bye